live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Welcome back everyone. We are wrapping up three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Microsoft Ignite. It is a game day atmosphere on the show floor at the Orange County Civic Center. Thank you so much to Cohesity for hosting theCUBE for this fantastic three days. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Stu, thank you, this is awesome. Well, we, we talk about the buzz on the floor right. and the energy on the yeah. show, and uh, definitely uh, here, Cohesity always uh, bright and uh, have a lot of activity in the booth, and uh, it's been a lot of fun absolutely. Uh, hanging out here for the week with you, Rebecca, and yes. our host and all, all of the guests. Yes, absolutely. So, so this is day three. Uh, we are we're, we're, we're starting our, our series of interviews, but I want to hear because you you are so in this community. You have a lot of connections, a lot of buddies, a lot of colleagues, former colleagues, current colleagues. What has impressed you about the show, and what is missing? Let's start with the positives first. Yeah, so, and, and it's interesting, because this is only my second year coming. Uh, one of those, you know, my background's networking. Uh, I've interacted with Microsoft for most of my career. I uh, would not say I'm deep in the community, but I know enough of the MVPs, have friends here, and really have learned a lot uh, in these two years. So first of all, the breadth of this show is just so impressive. One of the things you and I have been talking about the last two years here is, what is this show? It started out as a Windows admin show, a lot of discussion about Office, you know, migration to Windows 10 was the big thing last year. We haven't heard as much about this this year. Yesterday uh, was a big developer day. Uh, of course, Azure sits at the center of everything. Lots of big announcements here. Felt like, uh, you know, a kind of on par with what we hear at AWS's shows with just so many announcements across the board. Um, but really when you talk about, you know, the applications and business productivity, uh, people come to this show when I talk to people in the booth, I'm looking for solutions and how do I put those together? It's not some of the tech shows where you just, you're constantly down in the speeds and feeds and what they're doing and some of the competitive dynamics. It's, I have a problem, my business needs something, and this is what I'm looking to solve. And Microsoft has a broad and diverse ecosystem. Uh, and the, the word we kept coming back to, the word of the week, I think, is of course trust. Absolutely, I, you're, you're, I couldn't agree more with what you've just said. Uh, that is what we hear. And the other thing about Microsoft is that at a time when big tech is really under a lot of fire, there's a lot of suspicion, Policymakers, regulators are bearing down on a lot of the tech CEOs, uh, Microsoft really stands above. And when you think about antitrust, there's major presidential candidates talking about breaking up big, big tech. Microsoft is really riding above that fray. There's sort of a feeling of deja vu for Microsoft, I'm sure, but they've they're really been there, done that. They're, they're not going there. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, Satya Nadella, to, uh, you know, really put a pointed attack. He did not say it, but we all know it's Google. You know, the, the company that was do no evil uh, at the start now, everybody's concerned because Google's model is primarily selling ads. And while Google will say what they're doing in the enterprise, uh, you know, they just acquired Fitbit and said you're not going to get ads on your Fitbit. We're not going to leverage that way, but there's not that trust built up. And then, uh, you know, the, the number one competitor out there is AWS. And if you talk about the ecosystem, the concern at every AWS show is, oh my gosh, what announcements are Amazon going to make? And and are they going to you know, steal my lunch money, <laughs> if you were, or put me out of business for the years worth of work I'm doing? Microsoft doesn't feel that way. They, you know, if you talk about the ecosystem, uh, I was talking, they made announcements that do compete against a number of the products. RPA was announced as part of the power platform out there. There's a number of RPA companies here. I, I talk to them, They're, Microsoft's a strong partner, we've been doing breakouts, we're talking with them. Yes, they are just like SAP getting into this market, but it's a Microsoft shop and it's not, you know, it, it is new, it's not the best of breed there. Um, it, it, it's, uh, you know, they are not concerned uh, that they can still live in this environment. And I'd say both AWS and Azure, very much about choice and ecosystem and building them out. So you're, you're talking about the marketplace here. So in terms of the marketplace, what is Microsoft doing to drive business and is it effective? Well, actually, and I'm glad you saw, specifically we talk about the marketplace. So there's the ecosystem and then there's actually the marketplace. So AWS has what uh, you know we really consider, it's the enterprise app store. If I want to go buy software, uh, you know, there's Salesforce and all of their connectors and, and, and everyone that uses Salesforce uh, knows that, but AWS really has driven a robust 
ecosystem, just like on Amazon.com, most of the products that are sold are you know, from third parties. The AWS marketplace is mostly how I can procure and buy software, and they drive a lot of it, so a lot of the AWS adoption is through the marketplace, and the ecosystem makes lots of dollars. Um, reminds me, we used to talk about VMware for years, is for every dollar of VMware you bought, you would buy you know, 10, 20 dollars worth of third party ecosystem, but we were talking about things like storage and the like. For AWS, it's I'm um, procuring software, and underneath, uh, I'm leveraging the AWS services. While Microsoft Azure has a marketplace, it is not as mature, they don't, really pushes many people through it, so while I've talked to a number of the partners that are, yes, we're part of the marketplace, but people buy lots of different ways as opposed to AWS is trying to get everybody from a customer and an ecosystem through it, and part of that is to simplify the environment, how I purchase it, um, but it's that balance of trust and you know, ease of use uh, out there, so uh, when I look forward, you know, what I'd like to see from Azure is how will they mature there. Um, I was actually something, you know, John Furrier you know, had, had us digging into here, and the marketplace at Azure um, definitely is, I, I would say, years behind where AWS is, uh, is there. Um, but you know, Azure, great growth, doing really well, a strong, trusted ecosystem, uh, just some areas uh, for improvement that I would look for going forward. But maybe that's part of their, their approach and their strategy, is we'll work with you, we, we collaborate, we, we can do this together. Whereas AWS, there is that, that feeling sometimes when you're at reInvent, as you said, roll out the beer curts early, please. My business is over. So, <laughs> so, so comparing the two show, the three, the various cloud shows, and this is not just a cloud show, of course. We're going to get into that more. But when you think about reInvent and you think about VMworld, how does the the feel and the energy here differ? Yeah. Um, so the the thing that always strikes me when I go to an AWS show, and I, I've been to many of them, from the regional shows through the big one of reInvent, which is more than twice the size of this twenty six thousand person show, um, the customers there are always trying new things. They are open and looking for uh, the environment, uh, you know, that, that, that they can do th new things here. Um, what we're talking about here feels like, a, it's like a tweener. Um, we, we had a lot of conversations about building bridges to where customers are. Um, while AWS is starting to talk hybrid more and meet you in your data center and doing outposts, you know, Microsoft, they have their Windows install base. They have their O365 pieces. So there's a broad spectrum of from the latest and greatest autonomous systems. Uh, you want to talk about it, you know, Microsoft has that through, you know, I'm a, you know, 20 year sysadmin and, uh, you know, I'm going to hold on to, you know, my servers, uh, you know, as long as I can, uh, they're there for you. So Microsoft does span that gamut. Um, and VMware is more, uh, once again, making that transition as we go to the cloud. So Microsoft, right in the middle of that transition, we talked a bunch about digital transformation uh, with, with the customers on here. Um, so um, it really, it has a lot for a lot of different people. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, one of the things I've heard is they really ramped up some of the developer activity at this show. Uh, they just bought GitHub. GitHub has their own show, GitHub Universe, uh, next week, which will stay very very focused on that environment, but Microsoft also has a conference build, um, and there's been some rumblings that maybe you know, build and ignite uh, get wrapped together. We saw that with IBM. IBM had you know, lots of different shows, and they put all the wood behind Think and made that a massive show. There's pros and cons of that. Seen lots of companies that have taken a big show and put it into a you know, 40 show uh, around uh, the, the globe. Now, someone like Amazon has reInvent, but then they have lots of second tier and third tier regional shows to push that out. So lots of different ways to, to get to customers. Um, and and it, is, it is interesting, you know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about Azure Arc. Um, you know, I'll be at the KubeCon, Cloud Native Con show uh, in just two weeks in San Diego and expect that to be talked. And really, it is in preview mode. So when I look at it at the end of the day is, you know, you've got Red Hat OpenShift, you have Google Anthos, you have what AWS is doing uh, with, with, with Outposts, um, and you know, welcome to the party Microsoft. They've got a strong hybrid solution already because they played at both ends, uh, but really Azure Arc is 
unifying and pulling those together so that it's not just my data center in Azure, but even AWS, they're saying, we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, Microsoft definitely has a strong data focus and a strong application uh, focus, uh, and so it would be interesting to see where that adoption happens. I've been saying for a couple of weeks, really, Kubernetes just gets baked in everywhere, and you know, customers aren't going to have to think about it at much. Um, Microsoft, definitely strong partner focus, just to reinforce something I've said a couple times this week, they still have a partnership with Red Hat, they still have a partnership with VMware. Uh, the Azure Arc is not the only way to get the Kubernetes story and play in your Microsoft environment, and Microsoft's done well at that. You know, we all know from you know, the early days, Microsoft living on top of lots of hardware. Now, Microsoft software will live a lot of places. Yes, their cloud is large, growing, you know, one of the top two choices out there, but um, they truly embrace that it will be multi-cloud and uh, be able to live in lots of environments. So I want to talk about something that's more in my wheelhouse, and that is product so we have heard a little bit about Teams. I mean, there was a lot of announcements. It's not exactly where we focused a lot here on theCUBE this week, but there were some really interesting announcements about the ways in which Microsoft is thinking about human productivity, both individual productivity and team collaboration, the way teams interact and communicate. There are a lot of interesting new uh, characteristics and elements to what they're doing in terms of, Cortana, read, read me my emails. Uh, I'm going to send this email, but I'm actually going to wait. It's, it's going to be a scheduled send. It's going to send when, this, when the, the person I'm sending it to is, is actually at his or her desk. Right. Um, and so those are just some interesting things to me that really speak volumes about how Microsoft views the future of work and views the, the future of our of our lives yeah. and, and, and understanding how much technology has encroached in our lives because they're saying, read me my emails while I take my dog for a walk, right. while I am actually doing, while I'm on a run first thing in the morning, I, you know, make me more productive, but also give me my time back. And so I think those are some really, really interesting ways in which Microsoft, as I said, understands that technology has taken over and they're trying to give you a bit of your time back. Yeah, and it's interesting, because you know, when I look back, Microsoft has a bit of a checkered history when it comes to some of those environments. We, we all know the office suite. Teams is now part of O365, and I hear very strong, uh, you know, the people that use it really do like it. But those of us look back and we said, oh, I used to like using Skype, and then Microsoft got a hold of it, and oh my gosh, you know, what a horrendous mess uh, Skype was for a long time. Uh, when it talked to collaborative environments, Google really jumped Microsoft with the G Suite, and many smaller companies were like, oh, it's relatively easy to use and I can collaborate there. Well, Teams really has gone through and understand that, and we talk about a collaborative environment. You know, Microsoft Teams, best of breeds. I attended Enterprise Connect earlier this year, and I couldn't hear enough about how much uh, that was going on, and you know, strong ecosystem of uh, companies that Microsoft worked with, so it's very strong but it's kind of, if you're a Microsoft shop, you're doing it, but they, they did lose uh, many companies to you know, free or less expensive or lighter weight options out there, and then you know, everything from Slack uh, ate into it, but you know, Microsoft has a, a good product, absolutely. Uh, it just, some of it is the perception and some of it is the pricing. Uh, you know, they, they, they do a good job of making sure uh, that when you get, uh, you know, get to college, you, you want to use uh, some of these environments. Oh yeah, the pricing's great, it's free. Um, but then when you get in the real world, hopefully you'll like it. So Microsoft does have a little bit of battle. Not something we focus a lot on, but you know, did hear really good things about it and it does get lost a little bit uh, in, in some of the general discussion about all all the other pieces, you know, autonomous systems, AI, and the later th stuff of Azure uh, take a little bit of precedence over uh, the, 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 some of the things that uh, are a little a bit more on, uh, just as you said, business productivity, or even on the consumer uh, side of the house for Microsoft. So we are, we're, we're wrapping up here, but I want to hear just final thoughts, final predictions for 2020, and you've really gotten, you've, you, we've, we've covered a lot of ground here this morning, but I'm interested to hear what you think is on tap for Microsoft in 2020. Yeah, so I'll bring back to, to something we kicked off with. Uh, the Jet Ideal coming in here um, really has, that, that whole process of winning that bid was a forcing function for Microsoft to rapidly mature some of their environment. You talk about security and trust, you know, the government is not going to give that uh, environment if it to Microsoft if they could not trust them. 
Uh, back when AWS won a CIA deal, it was like, oh wait, if the security's good enough for the, 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 the CIA, uh, it's probably good enough for me to consider it. So uh, the government uh, agencies, uh, which historically is not who you think about when you talk about innovation uh, and driving change, uh, today public sector is really interesting. Um, even when we're talking to some of the people about, you know, hey, how come we haven't heard as much about Azure Stack over the years? Well, it's been a lot of service providers and government agencies that have been deploying this um, and, and, th and therefore will do it. So Microsoft still has a lot of work to do. Uh, the Jedi contract, they still have to get some more security clearances. Uh, they need to make sure their performance and reliability is up to snuff um, because you know, they, they just can't have outages. If, I, you know, if this becomes a greater and greater piece uh, of my overall, uh, how I run my business, uh, I, I can't say, oops, wait, you know, the internet's down. Uh, this is now 2019 going into 2020, and uh, in 2020, we'll all have perfect hindsight, oh, right, Rebecca? Oh, of course, oh yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, I'm looking forward to another great day of coverage with you, and thank you again to Cohesity for hosting us in this really cool booth. Uh, so, please stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite, coming up in just a little bit. <laughs>